Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet for up to $1,000 back in a beautiful bonus bet. Basketball comes on every night, almost every other night. You can find something that you can place some of that bonus bet money on. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses loses okay only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code Vach V-O-C-H Vach the crown is yours Pac-Man Jones better get his shit together. I, don't, I know that much. Xavier Rhodes. What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Appreciate y'all for being here. Another episode of Vash Lombardi Live. Swatty Cop, thank you so much for being here. Um, we got some work today, man. We just got the Mike Zimmer press conference, new defense coordinator, and all that. And as he has his introductory press conference, Steve Wilkes get fired. Uh, did you did you see that, Scott? Steve, yes, I Steve, did, man. I, I, hey, I think it might work out for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so look, hire a scrub. Hire one of them Eagles characters and, and and bump your bump your organization down a little bit or something. But I don't know. That's 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 for another conversation. We we could talk about that next Tuesday. We're gonna break down this Mike Zimmer um press conference next Monday or so. You know, me and me and Will still I like how on the same page we are. I just didn't want to jump out and be like, hey, Mike Zimmer said this. You know, I want to marinate on the on the things that he said. I want to try to find some nuances here. I wanna try to, you know, read the body language between him and Mike McCarthy. I wanna see what joke did Clarence Hill wanna say, but he just pulled out last minute and didn't even say it. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot to break down in that press conference. We'll talk about that later on. But um, today is our draft uh, is our draft show for the week, our All-32 draft show. And Dane Brugler dropped the top 100. Now, Sky, I was just going to break down some mock draft, mind my business, and go on by my Valentine's Day. I was just going to get up out of here. But um, Dane Brugler dropped a top 100, and somebody tagged me to it. Shouts out to – I forgot who y'all would have said. But I uh, appreciate y'all for, for sending it to me and tagging it to me because, you know, now we get some some extra content. And it's different than mock draft stuff, right? Mock yeah. draft is, is very team-heavy, right? But with this situation, we get to look at the players and be like, all right, so what's the league saying? That's what a lot of, you know, Dane's, you know, lists come from, right? What What is the league saying plus what is he saying? And then I get to agree or disagree. And if me and Dane Brugler don't go 100 for 100, then uh, he <laughs> trash. <laughs> me and Dane Brugler better not disagree not one time or else it's going to be an issue. <laughs> I'm being point guard about disagree. the best of business. Master Will, Scott Walker still. Appreciate you, sir. <laughs> Scott, I, I, was just, I couldn't I, remember what bank it was on, bro. Look, it's, look I saw you. I was like, <laughs> what did, you sure? But Skywalk's still good to go. Um, yeah. How you doing, man? You uh, got any plans for the day? Uh, we did ours over the weekend. So, you know, wifey is in the last stages of the pregnancy. Okay. So the moving and grooving ain't, you know. And during the week over here in Dallas, you know, so we did our little thing this weekend. You know, got the little gift coming and whatnot, but yeah, yeah. 
Okay, man, my guy. Okay, I got you. I got you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for being here. You know, appreciate you for for taking this time out your day. But you 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 are a seasoned veteran in this game. So you Indeed. got it done early. This is not new to me. You got it done early. <laughs> okay, I appreciate I appreciate you being here. All right, y'all. So uh to this Dane Brugler, uh shouts out to Will Still for the visuals here. I'm just looking at the visuals. You got yo, hey, Scott, hold up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold up, girl. Hold up, Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> Different, you know, something different. Yeah. I'm just, just, I'm looking at the. Vi I'm just talking to you in the camera. I'm looking at the other situation here. You're here. I'm looking down here. I say, hey, look at the, look at the graphics. Will still got a four. Shouts out to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, good sir. You know, you know, we always trying to improve here. Just testing some things out, seeing what the people think. Yeah. Hey, Scott, whether they like it or not, we're gonna keep on climbing. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? <laughs> whether they, hold on, let me go. Whether they approve or not. <laughs> This girl talking about. Hey, whether it's your first time tuning in or not, <laughs> you know I appreciate y'all. Y'all talking about. Yeah, you know I mean, Did hey not. man, I, yo, Scott, I've been doing this for a long time. We've been incredibly consistent. Hopefully, I remind you of the good old days back then. You know what I'm talking about? So, hey, so let's so let's get going. You feel me? Oh man, Scott. Oh boy, Missy Vash. Yeah, Vash love good mess, man. Vash love good mess. I like your mess though. It's responsible mess. Anyway. It's responsible, man. You know, because I mind my business at the end of the day. I mind my business at the end of the day, man. But it is what it is. All right, we got a hundred prospects, so let's not fool around here, okay? Um, we're not gonna go person by person by person. We'll be here till seven, and I ain't gonna do that. Well, you just, just give me the number, and I'll scroll it. down and make sure we got it right. I think me and your chemistry is impeccable, and I think that there is no way we can mess this up. Damn, you just put a lot of pressure. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> y'all got it. Man, I wish y'all could have heard the conversation. We got something, we got something for y'all next week, though. We got something for y'all. NFL draft legend Dane Brugler. Shots out to him. He does great work. Um, when I was a lowly Pizza Hut delivery driver, we're gonna sit up for this one, Scott. We're gonna get ready. Um, when I was a lowly uh, Pizza Hut delivery drive. I was washing dishes. I would tune into the draft show. I would tune into Brian Broaddus. Me and him friends in real life now. You hear what I said? I'm gonna I'm a run into Dane at some point. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I don't, I don't know what the process is going to be, but me and Dane are gonna have a gonna have a gonna have a sparring session one day. But we'll cross that road whenever we get there. But Dane Brugler has put together this top 100 list, and what we typically get from these lists is a combination of things is it's always media scouts. And there's like scout scouts, right? Like scout scouts been doing this shit since like last July, you know what I'm saying? And media characters kind of got to catch up a little bit. So what's happening now, as we look at the, it's, it's top 100 season, right? It's not way too early season. You know what I mean? It's got how, you know, season be over and we immediately have another way too early top list. Yeah. That time is over. So these top lists, right? These top 100s, 150s, 200s, whatever, uh, these are a real reflection of what scouts are saying, what the real teams are saying, what uh, media scouts are saying. Daniel Jeremiah will put his own opinion there. Bucky Brooks puts his opinion in there. Um, you know, Brugler will. But chat, do not get this mistaken. Take this note from Vach. Your opinion is the only one that matters at the end of the day. You understand me? That's how you feel. Vach has made a career of trusting myself. And that's what I encourage y'all to do. Trust your eyes, right? When I, Even as a young lad, when I first entered this business, I, I, and and there was this player that was you know on everybody's top two list, top three list, and I just trusted my eyes, and I was like, dog, Solomon Thomas don't get busy like that. Did you hear what I said? And I trusted myself, right? And my first viral video was me shitting on Solomon Thomas <laughs> for like thirty minutes. You know what I'm saying? But when you trust yourself, you can do things like that. So I'm gonna look at Dane Brugler's list, and we're gonna look at a lot of lists. But chat, at the end of the day, I'm going to trust myself and I want y'all to do the same thing, okay? We're going to break down this top 100 and there's going to be some film if I can, you know, work it in. You know, me and, me and Will still going to go back and forth on that. So let's run it for the cardio. Let's do this. <clears throat> Kayla Williams, number one. We don't have to do nothing too much there. But Skywalker still, we, we, we talked last week about the wide receiver position. And I particularly talked about how a lot of people are going to be cowards with the whole Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors conversation. Now, Scott. I don't know how people can have tags touching and nobody can roll out the bed and say, Hey, Malik uh, neighbors, there's no way he's better than Marvin Harris. Right. I'm not saying that I say Malik neighbors neighbors is better than, than Marvin Harris. It ain't April yet. One day, 
maybe I'll have that conversation with y'all. I don't know. But we see a lot more of neighbors just kind of creeping up in that situation. I wonder, Scott, I'm just curious. Are we raising Marvin Harrison because we're inherently raising Malik neighbors? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, are we, and, and look, when I say we, I don't mean me. Y'all know how I get down. I'm talking about them. I wonder, are people watching Malik Neighbors, and let's just say Malik Neighbors is like a 12th overall receiver for them, right? He's a wide receiver that's 12th overall on their board, and they keep watching, right? They go, okay, Malik Neighbors, you're really good. Let's, let, let me put you at eighth. But I can't put you over Marvin Harrison, right? Oh, Malik Neighbors, you're fifth now on my overall big board. But I'm going to move up Mar Marvin Harris because I can't make you better than him. Malik Neighbors is third on, on Dane Brugler's list. I wonder, is there some type of pressure to where, hey, I got to put Marvin Harrison as my number two guy because Malik Neighbors is my number three guy. I'm just curious. What's going to happen, Scott? This draft process is just going to keep happening. We're going to watch more film. The combine is going to happen. We're going to see if Marvin Harrison can really run a 4-3 at 6-4 with his route running ability. We're going to see if all these things are really true. And then Malik Neighbors is going to do Malik Neighbors things. And I just want to know, is anybody going to have the confidence to say that Malik Neighbors could be an Odell Beckham type character and maybe Marvin Harrison is not like Megatron? I don't know. I just want to see if anybody's going to say that, but... I just find it interesting that neighbors went from, hey, there's no way he's better than Marvin Harrison to the third overall player on the board. That's yes. interesting. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think he'd go that high, but interesting. Mm. Brock Bowers is the fifth overall player on the board. And y'all know I hate watching tight ends. So I've watched a bunch of him in, in passing and you really can't miss him. If you watch championship football or just good college football, you've seen Georgia a bunch. If you've seen Georgia a bunch, you've seen Brock Bowers a bunch, but I don't want to speak on tight end, you know, speak on a tight end unless I watch that tight end thoroughly. Uh, Joe Alt is, is his number one um, offensive tackle at number six. Shots out to him and Roma Dunze keep climbing up mm. this list. Also, he's, Clearly further than those other two guys on this list, but hey, Rome being that seven, interesting. Also, too, Scott, I wonder how many how many quarterbacks are in this top thirty because mock drafts are different than big boards, right? Big boards is just how you have players listed, who's better than who, regardless of position, right? Mock drafts is more so this team is taking that guy, this team is taking that guy. Why is that important? Because JJ McCarthy, let's just say quarterback from Michigan, JJ McCarthy, right? He may be the 40th player on the board. I don't think he's that great. I'm saying that definitively, right? He may be the 45th player on the board, but he plays quarterback. So by position value, he may go in the first round, even though he's the 44th player. You know what I'm saying? So Jaden Daniels is number eight. We'll have conversations about quarterbacks at some point. I'm not having it because I got a quarterback on my team, regardless of what uh, Cowboys think. But just by the way of the job, I'm going to eventually break down quarterbacks here. Olu uh, Fashino is number nine. Tarion Arnold is number 10. I still think uh, I'm not going to discriminate over Cooper DeGene. I'm not going to hold his whiteness oh, against him. He's wow. Cooper DeGene is my cornerback one, Scott. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at who was 11. Kenyon Mitchell yeah. is, is rising a lot, man. I wonder if that's in your bowl. So let's do this then, Scott. You absolutely right. You you damn right, Scott. That's exactly what happened to him. And that's the good thing about the senior bowl. Senior bowl uh isolates you. Senior bowl, you can't hide in the senior bowl. There's no pass rush that can help you when you're one-on-one -on -one with these receivers in these seven-on-seven -seven drills or these one-on-one -on -one drills. So Kenyon Kenyon Mitchell, it's probably Quinyon Mitchell, but if Kenyon, what you call him Kenyon Mitchell until I can say it phonetically. He was 38th on PFF's big board prior to uh the senior bowl, right? And Toledo plays a lot of, you know, they play Ohio, not Ohio State, but just regular Ohio. They play teams like Marshall. They play teams like Buffalo, Scott. They they play, you know what I'm saying? So when you look at his game log, and Scott, don't get me wrong, Kenyon Mitchell's game log is impressive. Uh, you see him with 18 pass deflections. You see him with a gang of picks on his resume. And the first thing that, that you say is, well, he may be really technically sound as a man cover guy. He's really smart as a zone cover guy. There's nothing I wouldn't ask him to do. Um, yeah, he size, he looks he looks kind of skinny, kind of wiry, but Emmanuel Forbes did also, and he was another ball skills guy, um, ex receiver, right? So when you see him beating the shit out of Buffalo and Central Michigan, right, Scott, you go, All right, but what will you do versus SEC talent? What would you do versus Big Ten, Big 12 talent? And he goes to the senior bowl and just covers everybody. Yeah everybody all the kids now you get to take 
that film that you watched and pair it with, hey, I know he can cover the big name kids because he did this. Now competition is not a detriment on his draft profile anymore. So Kenyon Mitchell at 11, I'm actually downloading film on corners now. So when me and Brian finish, I'm, I'm not name dropping. You hear what I said. Uh, when we're done with D tackles uh, Friday, Sky, I'm going to get into corners uh, corners next week. Uh, Kenyon Mitchell, I'm I'm going to be watching corners and I'm going to see where he's at. But the 11th overall player, I wonder if that's chatter around the league. It has to be chatter around the league, but we'll cross that road whenever we get there. Uh, we took a look at Dallas Turner last year. Um, I mean, last week on the show, 12th overall player. I disagree. I think there's some there's some ends better than him. Go ahead, Scott. I, I'm just. Get all these Alabama players in the top 15, man. They got them. <laughs> they got them. Bama got two pass rushes. They got two corners. Yeah, that's how it is this year. 3D lineman. And the OT. And the offense tackle, J.C. Latham, right <laughs> up under him. 360, 340-some pounds, good-moving fat kid. There's a lot of good-moving fat kids here. Um, there's a lot of wide receivers here. I haven't watched Brian Thomas yet, but he's 14th overall. I haven't watched him yet because PFF ain't have his ass 14th overall. If he was 14th overall on PFF's list, I probably would have uh, watched him earlier. But I might just move around some of this D tackle film that I'm watching just to get a feel for uh, Brian Thomas. But um, also, too, something you got to figure out with these kids, you know, Brian Thomas and um, neighbors, these wide receivers from LSU. LSU. You got you got to figure out, man, is that Jaden Daniels? Uh, lifting them up, or are they lifting Jaden Daniels up, or is this just a match made in heaven? This just happened a couple of years ago uh, with um, um, Joe Burrow, right? Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and um, I forgot the name of the third kid, but he's also a pro, played for the Panthers. I forgot his name. But even he's a pro, right? No, 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 no. It's mm -mm, it's another one. It's um, I know Matt Owen knows. He's in the chat. Who's the third LSU receiver? Carolina. He came out the next year. Marshall. Terrace Marshall. Terrace Marshall. Thank you, Don. Uh, so yeah, like they 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 stacked they stacked it up with talent. They stacked it up with talent. So but now it was still to, good though. Still good. Still good. Of course, one hundred percent. But um, I'm I'm gonna be watching Brian um Brian 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 Thomas Jr. He's a he's a six four good running kid. You gotta love six four good running kids. So we'll figure it out. Did we get a chance to talk about Byron Murphy last week, sir? Or did we talk it about it yesterday? You, we you, talked about you Byron Murphy. This film, yeah, yesterday. Scott Byron Murphy cold dog. Byron Murphy so cold. And looking at this, at this, and I'm I'm constantly going back to this PFF list because I think it's a good, it's a good tool to use to to know what people were thinking prior to uh January, right? Because I pulled this list in December when I started watching film. I think it's a good tool to see how people rise and climb. Um Jerzon Newton, D tackle from Illinois, right? He was a top 10 dude, bona fide, top 10 dude, explosive defensive tackle pass rush you got, right? He's 30th on this list. Byron Murphy was like 30th on this list, but he's 15 on this one. So maybe this is media scouts catching up to what the real scouts are saying, because maybe the real scouts had, you know, Byron Murphy pinned down the whole time. I just did a deep dive on Byron Murphy, watched about five games of him. I think Byron Murphy a better player than J.C. Latham. I think Byron Murphy a better player than Dallas Thompson, uh, uh, Dallas Turner. I'm not here for Kenyon Mitchell just yet. I think he's a better player than Terry and Arnold. Olu's pretty good. Quarterback, Rome. Okay, cool. So if it's up to me, Byron Murphy might be a top 10 type player, Scott. We just had a conversation. Go ahead. 15 is not far off. I mean. 15 ain't far. But. And, and all it take is one of them teams in the top 10 to fall in love with him. I just wonder if, if it's the position, right, mm -hmm. where usually you see a top 10 type guy. They, they've they got to be – now, Quentin Williams comes to mind. He didn't go crazy early, but them DTs usually – I think a Sue, right? If I, if I think you're going top five type at defensive tackle, you got to be Sue, even though Quentin did go that high. But yeah. I, I don't know if, if Bruh's in that tier, but 15, is that's some love right there to me. I don't think no. So Bruh's not in. He ain't Quentin. With I remember losing sleep right. watching watching Quentin Williams. I lost sleep over guys like Jonathan Allen. You know what I'm saying? Um, Byron Murphy. He went outside player. the top ten, I think, didn't he? Sure did. Um, Byron Murphy's a a good player, but he's closer to like you know how I felt about Jeffrey Simmons. You know what I'm saying? He's closer to him. And look, Jeffrey Simmons is stud, and he only he's fell to twenty because he's. 
because he's gun under the sea guy. He made some off the field mistakes, but um, I love me some Byron Murphy, dog. But I, I you don't. Know I don't. You got me on today, bro. Dwayne Carr. Yeah, oh, I said, let me go check this dude out today. <laughs> when it's our little clip thing, and I said, oh my, I almost hit you with a Vodge voice. You onto something? <laughs> so, so Scott, <laughs> this so boy. So listen, this talk is to this me, is, please talk to me. So this is still gonna be a raw reaction. I don't know if I, let me cut my music off. I don't know if I need to catch an attitude with Dane Brugley yet, because I ain't go all the way through this me top one hundred. All of these are new to me. Every last one, I didn't watch it. I don't know if he's on this top 100 list. If he's not, I'm going to have a problem with that. Mm. I, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself because I ain't as, as in it, as deep in it as you are. But phew. Scott, that do the second round pick at least. That do the I, second round pick at least. Talent, Possibly he got the talent. I, I don't. I don't know what the, the, the rankings is of because I'm interior and one tech different, right? I don't know what the rankings is, but boy, I I, I like to have him. Matt Owen in the chat, he hit me up, me and him talked about D-line a little bit today. He said, I got he said, I gotta start calling him Wheezy. Now, old Vach would definitely call him Wheezy, but you know, I'm friends with Brian Broaddus now, so I can't just get on the show and call <laughs> Dwayne Carter Wheezy. You know what I'm saying? I just can't do it. I gotta call him Dwayne Carter, the defensive tackle from Duke, you Duke. know, you know, because I got different friends now, you know what I'm saying? However, Wheezy go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> He go great, but yeah. Sky, I'm giving them benefit of the doubt. I hope he's on his top 100 list. If not, I'm going to. There will be content on Twitter uh, later. Yeah, uh, Terrence, Clarence Hill forward star Telegram. Uh, What's got for me? I, I, I guess you can say Dwayne Carter, defensive tackle out of Duke, is a hot boy. <laughs> what you say about Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, uh, you know, Follow Clarence, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a good player, high upside, and hey, man, sky's the limit for him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you say, not Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, boy, oh man, let's get back into it, man. That's fire, man. <laughs> oh, what? Wow, that's a good one too. Got that. What you say, not Chuck? Yeah, hey. What's up, man? What's up, man? Man. Catch up, man. All right, cool. Here we go. Um, Vodge. Huh? This might be my favorite offense. I ain't saying he the best. He might be my favorite, though. You want to know why? Because you like toughness. You like toughness. And a low-key trait, though, Sky. And, you know, we could talk about But you like control. I like control, mm-hmm. too. I like control. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, I don't want to see. That's crazy you picked that up. I never told you that. Of course not. Uh, But you're, but you're offensive line guy now. I don't like erratic movements i don't want to see it look like you're struggling to do something if you're in control you have a great combination of traits when talisi fuaga moves people it don't look like he's struggling to move people sometimes we'll see an offensive lineman they'll latch on and they gotta lift up and then they gotta turn and that's cool when they do that talisi goes fall (laughs) <laughs> and people fall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He moves people out the film with such a level of control. Talisi Fuaga, who also made a lot of money in the senior bowl. Yeah. There are no questions about his by his run by his run blocking ability. He might be the best run blocking tackle in the game. Um, but dog, if you had questions, it was in the passing game. And when what we saw from the senior bowl, it, I, I ain't seen no props. I didn't see no props because he's physically impressive, right? So Talisi Fuaga. I like him a little more than J.C. Latham, honestly. I think Talese is a little more um, consistent as a run blocker, and I just prioritize run blocking a little bit because I feel like you have to be a little more perfect to be a run blocker. You know, pass blocking, there's a lot of variables that can help you, whether it be chips, whether your quarterback, uh, you know, moving around, you know, um, getting rid of the ball quickly. There's a lot of things that can save you in the passing game. Ain't a whole bunch of help in the run game unless you combo with somebody. Um and smoke Talisi Fuaga, man, he 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 he's he does the harder skill better, in my opinion. And that's and that's run blocking, man. I'm taking Talisi, I'm sending him to Duke, and I'm refining all the edges, dog. I'm hmm. top two tackle for me, Sky. I ain't, it's, it's not official yet, but we'll see. Our Marion Smith, go ahead, I please. love that there's a lot of tackles <clears throat> in this top 25, top 30, whatever. Because if, if if you start to see him falling, 
I'm I'm big and trying to get an offensive lineman early in this draft. So sure. I mean, just if you look at it, um JC Late. So Talis Fawag is like the fourth tackle on this list, but he's the 16th overall player, right? Or Marius is the fifth. Tyler Guyton is the sixth, and we're at 18th overall. Mm -hmm. I think this is a little high for Tyler Guyton, but somebody's gonna look at those traits and they're gonna gamble on them. And it's interesting that Tyler Guyton's tag is touching our Marius Mims because both of those guys have the same concerns, you know, the raw, uh, the you know, the technical abilities, the refinement, the nuance, you know, hand placement, movement, you know, cutting guys in half, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, pad level, things like that, you know. Um those two guys, it's interesting that Mims is over him because if there's any like rawness or whatever, Tyler is the more raw guy. But I think Armarius deals with his rawness more, which is interesting, right? Because when I look at Tyler Guyton, I see a kid with a gang of problems. And when I say that, people thought, well, about you bullshit, Dane Brugler loves him. Man, shout out, shout out Dane Brugler. But when I look at our Mary's Mims, Scott, what I say, if you're going to have bad technique, at least whoop somebody with your bad technique. That's what I loved about Tyler Smith. We all knew Tyler Smith uh, was a dude. We just didn't know that he was going to fix all of his all of his tackle problems in five weeks or whatever. But our Marius Mims, with his issues, I still see him whoop people. I still see him in control. I still see him maintain blocks and explode guys. Sometimes Tyler Guyton, most of the time, Tyler Guyton, you know, he'll have his technique issues. You you can see his athleticism, but he I don't see him destroy people. I don't see him move people off the film like a Talisi Fawaga would, right? So all of this hype behind Tyler Guyton, people can poo-poo on Vach, like, Vach, you hating on Tyler Guyton. Everybody loves him. I don't hate Tyler Guyton. Me and Dane Brugler kind of agree here. I just like Mims and Fuaga and Latham and... Fashionu and all I like all those dudes better than Tyler Guyton. Sorry, Sky. I also like Troy Fats better than Tyler Guyton. You know what I'm saying? Even though I, I can understand I like why Tyler, Tyler, I can even I can understand why Tyler Guyton is higher because he's the more physically impressive. Um, Troy got shorter arms. You know what I'm saying? But. I like Troy better. Sky, keep it in the book. I like Jackson Powers Johnson better. Yeah. Same as shitting on Tyler Guyton. I just like a couple dudes better than him. Well, I think people have to understand, and if you if they follow Vach on Barty for years, they know. Floor. I, I think the floor for me, for Troy Fats, um, for for Fat is if oh, I'm never gonna get it right. Fatanu. Fatanu. No, 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 not Fats, but the the, the other one. Um Fuaga. Tell he's Fuaga. I'm just Fuaga sounds a great look. It, it sounds look. like a wrestler. <laughs> Umaga. Fuaga. You know what I'm saying? Sound like a like like that they be doing that, that Zimmer don't like. But go ahead. But yeah, so Fuaga. I feel like those dudes can come in right now and move bodies, like you said, and and and, mm -hmm. and be productive per se. Not in the sense of like old boy from UCLA. I feel like he was so untechnically sound um from last year. That's why he went so late. Had the power, but he did not have the technique. And you saw Fuaga. that. Fuaga. Mafia, you saw that in um in New England, where where Troy and the other kid, they, they kind of look a little red. And yes, they got to be refined, but they look like they get plug and play, and you can you can operate. Yeah, um, if I could just get back on this list, man, Jackson Powers Johnson, I think is a player that's better than, better than Tyler Guy, but you know, that's, that's that's you know whoever's opinion. Jared Verson, which I thought he would be a little higher on this list, but he's around the twenty one. I think by the time we get to to draft day, I think he'll be drafted higher than. 21 because he's an edge player and everybody's looking for edge work so he'll probably be a little higher liatu latu in my personal opinion sky is way too low here way too low here i think he's edge number one i think he's the best edge in the draft i think he's better than all these other characters That's me crazy. personally me personally for edge one it's crazy i don't um i don't get the medicals you know what i mean they don't send them to me will mcclay get them jerry jones you know what i'm saying they get them but I don't get the medical. And apparently, Liatu Latu got some medicals. But his medicals shouldn't bump him down the big board. The big board should only be about um, the talent. If we're, if we're talking about talent, Liatu Latu better than all these kids. He better than all these kids. He better than Dallas Turner that they got him as they got as as they got at edge one. He's better than Dallas Turner and Jerry Burst, but I don't know. Cornerback one for, for me, for Vach. Cooper DeGene at number 23. Like I said, we're watching corners next year. I'm gonna next week. I'm gonna have a really good highlight package put together uh for all these corners. So y'all hang tight on that. JJ McCarthy at 24, too high for me. I think he's 
I think J.J. McCarthy, one of them dudes that you just kind of end up drafting because you need to draft quarterback, but they don't really progress your your quarterback situation. Like, like one of them Kenny Pickett type characters. You know what I mean? Like one of them, you know, Mac Jones type characters. They don't progress your quarterback. You don't get a dude you can just I, hold on to forever. I don't know what they saw in Mac, but Pickett went, what, third round? Mm-hmm. Or no, Pickett went first round, right? Was Pickett first? That year, somebody didn't go in the first round. It was Pickett and Willis. Willis, Willis. went third round. I'm sorry. Willis. Willis went third round. I think they, he won second. But yeah, I, I, that's a great comparison right there. I, I know he's, a, I think he has a better arm talent than Pickett, but I don't, I don't see the, the it situation with him. Hmm. I don't see it. Um, and if that's the case, like, you know, if you're not grooming him to be like quarterback two or three or something, then you shouldn't take him in round two and three because it's better players you could take in round two or three. Like, if you're not a, a franchise quarterback for real, for real, and I know we could say that about, you know, Dak or, you know, you know, fourth round pick or whatever, but I'll take a day three gamble on somebody. But if I don't believe in you for real, I'm not taking you in round one, two or three because yeah. it's, it's, it's better dudes there. But anyway. Uh, Nate Wiggins corner. We'll watch him soon. Chop Robinson at 26 is some Chop. nonsense, but <laughs> hey, people like athleticism. Uh, I like Graham Barton 27. I like Graham Barton better than Chop Robinson. I like him better than JJ McCarthy. There's no way you watch film on Graham Barton than watch film on JJ McCarthy and say JJ McCarthy is a better quarterback than Graham Barton is offensive line. Do, do you think he's going off of value because because it's a quarterback? It shouldn't matter because this is this is a a oh, big. I see what you're saying. This is just. Okay. This, okay. This, Best big, this, this, this top 100. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? So there's never a world where I think JJ McCarthy's better than Graham Barton, but it is what it is. Uh, Keon Coleman, in which he's an interesting player, he's a bigger player. Uh, let's watch the film on, on Keon Coleman because we ain't watched film on him last time. Lots of uh, tall wide receivers in this first round. A lot of tall wide receivers, man. And, and you, you know, it's funny because last year was the year of the small receiver, right? All the mm-hmm. all the little yep. guys. <laughs> That's the, crazy. It was the best guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you know the wide receivers got a little size. You know, all you had to do was wait one year. Now you got six, four, six, three all over the place. All over, yeah. Um, but Keon Coleman, whenever you're right, I got you, big dog. You know, what I'm saying we'll we'll still the best in the business. Uh, thing about Keon Coleman is, you know. I just need him to play like he's a big dude all the time. And that's the one thing that can kind of uh, get me away from, you know, some of these, some of these characters sometimes. Like I need you to not only be a big guy, but like play like it and act like it and run people over and all that kind of stuff. Keon Coleman, solid player, hands player. I think his, um, his Michigan state film was also impressive. He uh, transferred into Florida state and, He's a he's a size guy, but he's not like incredibly bursty. So if you're gonna be big, you either need to play big or be like a bursty big dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's bursty big dude, so I think that's why he's kind of falling a little bit. Uh, but at this size guy, I want I want everybody this size to be like Xavier Leg. This catch is ridiculous, guy. I want everybody to be like Xavier Leg. Like I'm bigger than you, and I'm gonna start running over you. I'm gonna start doing AJ Brown stuff to you. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want from my big receivers. Um, but he he um he kind of has uh uh Quinn Quinn Johnston type traits to him. Like he's a bigger dude, but hey, I want to be the you know the faster guy or whatever. But he is a solid hands guy, he is a um contested catch guy, as you can see, uh jump ball dude, and he does have yak ability. I just want him to have the yak ability I want him to have. That's a yeah. fantastic block from him. Um Florida State and this LSU game got real personal, <laughs> and I just love plays like this you got to show love to uh to the wide receivers when they do play with a little bit of, of um of uh physicality there but he is more of a he's a he's a tall smooth character guy but i want him to be a tall run you over type dude now Ooh, now you physical. do you do that's but now you do get physicality in the routes though right you get physicality in the routes you get physicality in the jump ball game contested catch game slant game which could be good for the west coast situation um but i just want him to be yak guy like hey man run this dude over just thump this guy right um but in terms of contested catches in terms of like end zone guy red zone dude that's keon coleman for you uh so he is going to be a dude that's going to be in the cowboys range guy and hey man wide receiver may not be at the very very top of my list i prioritize you know other things more than wide receiver right now but if if you know keon coleman is there i don't think i would absolutely hate it if the Cowboys took Keon Coleman, I just want one of these offensive linemen. I want to make my defense elite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I would. I, I'm listening. I, I would not be jumping for joy 
Um, mm-hmm. I'd eventually come around to it because I do think there, there's a need for an X wide receiver, yep. um, not yep. named Michael Gallup. Yes, yeah. Preferably, uh, that that would be Leggett for me or Leggett, however you pronounce it. But mm-hmm. I get it. I, I would understand it here. I yep. just I'm not I'm not as high here at 28. Yep, understood. And and that that could be the thing, Scott. Twenty eight. Now, if he's a dude that like makes it to you in the second round or something like that, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Let's do it. Twenty eight's a bit high. We we talked about Kool Aid McKinstry. Uh, I forgot who it was that mocked him to the Cowboys. It was uh, uh, Connor. 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 Let's say. Should I say? Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, press man guy. We just saw the uh, Mike Zimmer press conference or whatnot. So they're gonna be looking for press man dudes, but. We'll see. Jerzon Newton at 30 now, Sky. Talk to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't know what don't to know say. Either. You know what I'm saying? Jerzon Newton was a guy that, like, you can take a look at his at Didn't his he pop program. up at – did he go to the senior bowl? He's not He's, he's not a senior bowl. So, guy, somebody was was uh, posting some film about him, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize he was this small. So, and, and Sky, that's, that's my thing, man. Like, he's technically – of he's like six two and he's technically a three hundred pound plus guy, right? I got some film for you, Scott. Please. He's a he's a he's a three hundred pound plus guy. But my thing about him is that I feel like his athleticism alone. Take a look at his athleticism, Scott. His athleticism, his hands, like you know this kind of stuff. I think he's in this trendy thing where we're looking for the upfield bursty defensive lineman, right? Collegiate Cansey, the Aaron Donald type guys. You know what I mean? The 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 upfield Who's dude. A Coleman really? kid. That, he kind of built like him a little bit from last year. Was a Wake Forest. Um, Kobe Turner? Turner. Kobe Turner, yeah, 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 not Coleman, Kobe Turner, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so in my mind, you know, you can't find a whole bunch of this type of athleticism at his size. Hmm. So, when I saw Jerzon Newton as like a top 10 pick for a D tackle, I was like, all right, cool, Jerzon Newton, top 10 guy, fine, but now he's 30, and I don't understand why he's 30 because even if he's not your best defensive tackle, because I do think Byron Murphy's better than him. You know, you get pass rush ability from him. You get explosion from him. I just don't understand how he's 30 now, how he went from 6 to 30. Even if you feel like he's not as good as he once was, or maybe you watched a little more film, and maybe you overrated him a little bit, at least put him at 15. At least put him at 10. I think this athletic profile, uh, it should it should definitely be a little higher than 30. So maybe I should ask some, some questions here. Maybe I should try to figure this out, but... Um, Drizon Newton falling down like this is a bit strange, a bit strange, but I don't anticipate this staying this way. I think he's going to be a fast running combine dude. Uh, Dane has him listed as 6'2, 295. Um, yeah. I think it'll, I think he'll probably, you know, he'll probably rise a little bit. Darius dude, Robinson, go ahead, 103 pressures over the last two seasons. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. You'll take that dude at 30. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all, man? Yeah. Um, Darius Robinson, this guy, he's another dude that earned himself a shit ton of money at uh at the senior bowl, right? And if y'all and you look, know, if y'all want to, y'all can. Y'all just go back to, to my senior bowl one-on-one videos and you'll see a lot of Darius Robinson beating the hell out of whoever it is that he that he that he lined up against. Um uh, played in Missouri. And when you're in Missouri, people don't really consider you like SEC talent, but you're in SEC talent, sir. You you go against all the best dudes. And if you look at some of the games that he that he played, like he terrorized Georgia, one of the better offensive lines in the SEC, terrorized those guys. And all he did was go to the senior bowl and continue that work. Um, he plays everywhere, Sky. He can he can play the one, two, three, and the five. I think he's going to be like a two-gapping, odd front defensive end type guy um, where he could just stack and shed people and maybe there will be a rushing linebacker outside of him. But Darius Robson can play. Go ahead. I know this is all 32, man, but but, but between between him and a couple of these other edges, I think this is a sneaky spot for Dallas. I agree. Very I- sneaky, especially with Zimmer because Zimmer has a type. And if yep. they decide to put Mike a, 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 you know, a backer, outside backer, you're going to need to replace him. 6'5", 286 pounds. Like, that is as traditional of mm-hmm. defensive end as you get, you know. Um, maybe they don't have faith in Sam. Maybe Dorrance Armstrong doesn't come back because he want to go chase some money. Maybe Dante Fowler ends up going to the Washington football Wizards because they want to, they want an easier coach to get along with or whatever the reason <laughs> is, right? Um and if Michael Parsons end up playing a lot more linebacker, you need some defensive ends. And I wouldn't be surprised if Darius Robinson is there. Um, the Cowboys consider 
yeah. is like a like a like a need, you know what I'm saying? And they and they go after him. Now, free agency is gonna tell the whole story. Sure. But just as of now, there Darius Robinson at 34, at, at, at 31, pardon me. He should um definitely be on your radar. Jordan Morgan at, at, at 32 is some nonsense. I like Jordan Jordan Morgan more than I like Tyler Guyton. This ain't me putting Tyler Guyton in the in the in the in the thirties. I just think Jordan Morgan should just be a little bit higher than him. Tavondre Sweat at 33 seems to be a little bit high for me. Me and Matt Owen were talking about Tavondre Sweat, and we thought Cowboy Nation was kind of overrating him a little bit. I wasn't ready to say that publicly just yet. Um, but hey, I just said it. Uh big guy, one tech. They hate Mozzie right now. I, I, I get it. Cowboy, we need to stop the run. I totally get why Cowboys Nation would would he, he'd be higher there for Cowboy fans. I get it, man. But yeah, he ain't Vita Vea though. You know, what nah, I'm saying? I was about to say, you know, and and maybe this. I'm not saying this is gonna be a Mozzie situation, but you know, a lot of people didn't like Mozzie going the first. I was fine with it, but I didn't expect him to be 290 Mozzie. But no. I, I get it. Yeah, it is what it is, man. I was uh. <laughs> Yo, Scott. Hold up, hold up, Hey, uh, hey, uh, Vosh, can you give us, uh, can you give us a like a player comp for, um, for, um, Sweat? What, what kind of player are we gonna get from Devon Trey Sweat? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's not he's not be the no. I just wanted a reason to play the Buster Rouse. But yeah, he's you had um, to be there, y'all. You had to be there. Yeah, they miss shows. Don't worry about it. They did it to themselves. Um, but the thing about Tavondre is that he's not a Vita Vea type. He's not a um Vea could rush the passer in, in college. Sure. He's not that kind of guy, but he's better than what you would get from a Bohanna or from like a Ridgeway. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he's not like an A3 dude. Uh so I think he's like a late second round early third or something like that i think i think 33 is a bit high for him but anyway lab mcconkey the uh little the little white kid uh senior boat georgia route runner man. looking like looking like hunter renfro out there i was watching him and i hit up foot so i was like hey man we need a wide receiver Dak needs you put that uh, in the uh illuminati chat <laughs> yeah, yeah he, well I look he just gets open and and you know there were there were many times where uh, we'll be going against a team that plays a bunch of zone, but since we play them, they end up playing a whole bunch of man, and you just needed route runners. You just needed route runners. Lab McConkey going to get open. He's going to get open, Skywalker Steel. So he had a he had a fantastic senior bowl, so seeing him at 34 makes a little bit of sense. Uh, let's get through this a little bit. Uh, Mitchell at 35, you know, we'll watch him. He's another six, you know, tall guy. He's, God, he's, he's another one. It's tall guys all up and down this damn draft, Scott Walker still. Uh Zach Frazier is climbing. I'm a fan of Zach Frazier. I just don't I didn't think that Zach Frazier had one skill that super impressed me, but he's a solid good player. Bo Nix at 37, too high. You're fooling yourself. Um how, how much you want to bet it goes higher though after combines and stuff, pro days. Watch. Definitely he'll he'll, he'll, he'll probably definitely quarterbacks, go man. It's gonna be about five of them taken first round watch. Even though Bo Nix has some of the things that I like in quarterbacks, though, right? Like you played a bunch. Um, I typically like seniors because they're older. They just seen the game a lot more. Bo Nix been 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 playing for six years. You know what I'm saying? He was fifth year senior. And he did the whole uh, COVID year. I'm exaggerating, but he's like been 27 playing. years old. Dog. Yeah, he's been playing for a long time. Um, but 37 is a little high for Bo Nix. Uh, Kingsley Suomatea, we talked about him last week, the super mm-hmm. athletic BYU kid, the, the the big, big, big offensive lineman that moved really well. Uh, Junior Colson is a big linebacker, but, you know, you can have your questions about him. It just depends on what you like in your linebacker. Uh, if, he, if you like mental processing guys, you know, maybe, you know, whatever. But he's bigger, and I don't want Cowboy Nation just to lean on him because he's bigger. Uh, Troy Franklin, I don't watch safeties. Adrian Cooper at 42. I would love him to be my my cowboy second round pick, but if he's taken, I understand. Um, I hate safeties, corners. Roman Wilson, he's another white kid. He's the one from Michigan. He's gonna go out there and uh, be another good route running slot guy. But shots out to him. Xavier Worthy, gotta watch him. Cooper Bibby, uh, Co- uh, Foots always says ass matters. Pause. Like you know, he's a he's a big offensive line. He's a huge wide move you around character. Forty seven may be a little high in my personal opinion, but he's out there. Um, and it's Rake Straw as a cornerback. I've heard a whole bunch of them. I'll give y'all a full report on my corners next uh, next week. Uh, I'm saying you, you know we ain't watch no tight ends. Uh, Marshawn Nealon, senior bowl guy, went out there and did some solid things. But I, Dwayne Michael Carter Scott is a better player than some of these characters we're looking at. Uh, Ruke Oro Oro. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, but Clemson. Well, there's some names in this draft. 
Ruke Oro Oro, Nigerian. Uh, he's from Lagos. I ended up watching him. That dude ain't better than Dwayne Carter. All right, dude. Dwayne Carter. He ain't same thing. He ain't he ain't better than Dwayne Carter, Scott. And we at 52. I think I'm gonna be upset with this top 100 boy. I don't think Dwayne Carter gonna be on it. That's gonna upset the hell out of me. But Ruke is a first step guy. He's a heavy hands guy, but he don't really know what to do with the heavy hands after he heavy hands you. He makes some plays in the run game if you run at him. Um I don't like it, man. I don't like it. He's gonna be a good player somewhere. I think um they they made him play in positions where he's not really good at. You know what I'm saying? I think he's gonna be like a two gapping character. Like I said, stacking and shedding is well, stacking is kind of his thing. He can punch and mount people up, but he don't shed very much. He's a dude that's gonna need coaching, Scott. But I'm about to be disappointed with uh <laughs> with the with the lack of my guy here, but we'll see. Um Adisa Isaac is the other Penn State pass rusher. He's a run around the circle guy. Cool. Jalen Polk is a – he's actually a really good receiver. I watched him in in passing. If you watch enough Washington and Michael mm-hmm. Phoenix, you'll definitely see a bunch of um of uh, Jalen Polk. If you don't get Roma Dunze. He's or a, Dunze, yeah. Yeah. Patrick Paul is not good. Is this your uh, – who was your boy last year in Florida? Osiris Torrance. Is this your Osiris Torrance? He worse than Osiris. Yeah, at 55, they had, Osiris was like routinely mocked first round, ended up going second. But I'm not taking him with a second round pick. Patrick Paul is a day three character to me. He got long arms. He's six seven. The problem is that six seven don't work in his advantage all the time. But it just depends on who you are. And chat, I just urge y'all to find out who you are, and that's going to make drafting make a lot more sense to you. You know, are you floor guy? Are you ceiling guy? Do you like the technical player? Do you like the raw prospect with all the natural ability? And you can maybe coach him up a little bit. Dog. Mark Aaron says if Patrick Paul was shorter, he'd be better. I don't know. I don't know. His tallness is a part of the problem, but I see six, seven characters. That, I mean, that can bend really well. They got one at the, at the at the top of the goddamn draft. <laughs> that's, that's tall as hell, but he can bend just fine. You know what I'm saying? So Patrick Paul being tall, he ends up as a tall player because he doesn't bend. He bends at the at the at the waist. He bends forward. You got to bend at the knee, which is more down, chest up, hands in the holster, knees bent. The minute you do this, a good D lineman gonna grab some cloth and pull you forward, and you gonna go with him. You know what I'm saying? Patrick Paul ain't good. Patrick Paul, one of these dudes to where I don't even have film on him because I ain't feel like trying to find good plays to lie to y'all. You know, you know how I'm like, all right, y'all, here's your son, Newton. There's some good plays I like from him. I don't even want to lie to y'all with 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 Patrick Paul for real. I don't want to show no plays to Patrick Paul. I ain't got no film saved on him. I don't think he's good. Patrick Paul got got some of the longest arms in the whole draft, but he don't use them properly. Patrick Paul got T-Rex long arms. He got ar- arms longer than everybody, but if you attack like this, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. not strong. If you attack like this, you're not strong. Yeah, look, Dane is basically saying it in Dane's way, what you talking about. His length becomes a detriment when he misses in his pad level and timing are still in development. But he's, oh, I, sure. I wonder if I just because it's, it's the tackle. Again, I know you said this isn't about the value, but I just some of these guys, I just feel like the value is being played during this top 100. It's one of these goofy ass characters that say, hey man, I, if I could teach him how to use his length, man, he'll be just fine. Yeah. Meanwhile, Scott, there's offensive linemen that have terrible arm length that can deal, that can do arm length shit better than him. I'm not rolling the dice on somebody that I think, hold on, Scott, let me go to my O-line. Let me, let me just go to tackle real quick. Who hasn't been drafted? Uh, or who hasn't been on, let's see, uh, Kingsley, Christian. Christian Haynes from UConn is better than him. Um, Cooper Bibby went. Uh, so it is like slim pickings right now. Uh, Cedric Van Cedric Van Pran, center from Georgia, he's a little better than him. Um, all the Michigan kids are better than him. It's four Michigan kids, by the way. Uh, Zenter, Nugent, King, Keegan, and um, Henderson. All those guys better than him. Um Nah, nah, man. I'm 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 not no, no, man. No. No, 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 no. Uh, um Christian Christian uh Harris. Christian is it Christian Harris? Uh the right tackle from Texas that I liked a bunch that I haven't watched, but I watched his senior bowl film. He's better than Patrick Paul. Patrick Paul didn't win a rep at the senior bowl. 
I don't know, man. It's just. Uh... I don't know, Scott. Braylon Trice is better than fucking Patrick Paul. <laughs> <laughs> He's better than goddamn Patrick Paul. Got me, Michael uh, Penix being below him. The way you Michael about Michael Penix. Yeah. Uh, have you seen any of these guys, Scott? Have you seen Have you seen Patrick Paul yet? Only when you were talking about him last. I think you put his um two weeks ago. I'm sorry, I seen your bowl. You you were breaking it down. That's it. Fuck around, delete that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of all that. Let me let me pull up Braylon Trice real quick, man. Let me go. Uh window. Christian Jones. Thank you. Uh thank you, Zach. Let me see. Boom, boom. Here we go. It's Trice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Braylon nice. Bra- So Braylon, Braylon Trice. He's the he's on the left side right here, defensive end standing up number nine, number eight, number nine. Yeah, number nine. Right. This character, he's a power rusher, you know, stand up. He's standing up in college or whatever. He's probably going to be a hand, a hand in the dirt guy. Let me find my, here we go. He's going to be a hand, a hand in the dirt guy, but solid in the run game, powerful hands, power rusher, speed to power rusher. Um, great length. I think he got solid, you know, solid size, 6'3", 280 pounds, like a, like a real defensive end size or whatever. And I'm just looking at him right side of your screen here. I'm just looking at this dude, this guy. First of all, the film was in my head that he's better than Patrick Paul. And now I'm looking at him and I'm just like, yeah, uh, left side of the screen. I'm looking at him and I'm just like, yeah, I think he's better than Patrick Paul, man. Power dude, effort guy, pass rusher, run game dude, right side of your screen here. Like the run hands game. There. Yeah, I'm just like, man, this, this uh, <laughs> Patrick Paul ain't for real. <laughs> But hey, Sky, watch watch Patrick Paul go be a Hall of Fame or some shit like that. Like that's just how life works, you know. What I'm saying? Tags are right. touching though. To be fair, so they shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be. Also, too, Sky talking about Patrick Paul. Uh, Dwayne Carter is better than goddamn Patrick Paul. But oh, I guess Patrick Paul got it going for him that he's six foot, seven foot, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go, Scott. Mm, let's fucking go, Scott. Let's go, sir. Gotta that, go that's, away. That's a goddamn dad joke of the day. <laughs> that's a dad joke of the week. <laughs> he was six foot, seven foot. Scott is crazy. <laughs> let's go, sir. Um, Kieran. I'm a I'm a god J. I'm let's see. I'm a god J. I'm a oh, I'm a god J. I'm a god J. Right. Uh, he plays for Yale. Got it, got it. He plays for Yale. And this is my whole thing about him playing for Yale. He 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 wins versus the Yale kids, and that's fine. I want him to beat the shit out the Yale kids. You know what I'm saying? Well, pardon me, the Monmouth, the Ivy League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brown. You know what I'm saying? I want him to beat the shit out the kids at the Brown. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Them kids gonna be investing in stocks and shit. Them kids gonna, you know what I'm saying? I want him to beat the hell out of them. So I thought Senior Bowl would have been a great opportunity for him to come out and play some some great talent. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't. So 58, cool. Dwayne Carter better than him. TJ Tampa haven't watched him corner, corner. Chris Braswell at 61 is ridiculous. Chris Braswell at 61 is ridiculous. Wow. He was when we were talking about him last week, I, I assumed he was a top 30 type player. He, he should be. I think he's better than DJ Turner, but that's just my own opinion. Um, I don't hate anybody that thinks that Turner is better than Braswell, but I even showed film on Braswell, Scott. And, you know, you saw it. And the film that I showed you on Braswell doesn't show a player that's 61 overall. I got questions. I got questions, man. Um, Haven't seen... Uh, so, safety. Haven't seen Blake Fisher. I'm going to watch some more of these wide receivers. Chris Jenkins, solid player, but... Scott, I'm about to get... I got 23 more picks. Well, hold on, wait. <laughs> I got 23 more picks before I see Dwayne Carter and I have attitude, man. I got the film ready for you, Sky, by the way. Uh, for uh Dwayne and Michael Carter. Uh the the first linebacker is off the board as I mean, pardon me, the first running back is off the board at 70 before we get Dwayne Carter. Christian Haynes at 71. I'm fine with that if you want to. Second running back at 73, Blake, Blake Corum. Tommy Eichenberg, cool, fine. Uh, Braylon Allen is a wire, is a running back that I like. He's a power running back. One day, Peyton Wilson falling to seventy seven. Scott, now do you do you think the Cowboys 
Cowboys like, you know, we like hurt dudes enough to take them in the second round. But if I can get Peyton Wilson like after that, like in the third or something, oh my God. You know, now you know damn well that's a that's a round two special for Dallas. However, it's so strange with him because there is no medicals the last two years. It's all prior to that. Yeah. And, but, you know, you hear Brian talk about double-digit surgery. It's, it's, it's scary when you hear that. But, man, this Scott. motherfucker can play, man. If, <laughs> he, if he ain't been hurt in the last two years, I ain't trying to hear it. Yeah. Um, running back. Xavier Leggett at, at 80. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up for, for, for third-round Xavier Leggett. Now, Brandon Dorless is an interesting player. I haven't showed film on him. Let me show some film on Brandon Dorless. Um, He's running back. Brandon, you're gonna be in a good sweet spot, bro. At that day, end of the day two, end of day two, bro. That's that's or that's started. That's, I should say it started third. Good they all there, they all there. You, you probably get your running back and forth this year. <clears throat> um, Brandon Dorless is a defensive lineman, a very compelling, compelling character. Brandon Dorless is guy because I'm watching him and he's 6'3, 272 pounds, guy, and he plays defensive end and three tech and one tech. Right, he's powerful and he's quick. I, you know, I don't want to say like David Irvin. He's a less talented David Irvin, right? He's not as talented him, and he's not as big. But that's the only way I can kind of think of a dude that can play one and five like that. You know what I'm saying? But keep his frame, like his tall frame, like he's not a fat dude or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, got some film for you, Scott. So I'm looking at Brandon Dorless. I'm gonna have to walk y'all through this because I haven't edited edited this up real quick. But uh, Brandon Dorless over the right tackle here, left side of your screen. So he's a guy that can play with length, arm length, bull rush type guy. Let me get back into my clips here. Bull rush type Ooh. guy, and then I know Scott, Bench and then he, then he moves over here, uh, left side of your screen here. Then then he moves over here versus Troy Fats, a guy that we respect a bunch, links him up. Arm links him up, stacks, sheds, get rid of him, plays the run a little bit, right? Then we move on. He's versus the right guard right here, 56. Boom. And I don't just recommend nobody run down the middle of anybody, but sometimes offensive linemen let you do it. It's the arm length game with him. Arm length, power in the bull rush, then the swim over the top to get back inside to get the uh, pressure and the hit on Penix here. Uh, number three, let's see, down here uh, versus the right guard, 56, on the left side of your screen here. Just he plays everywhere, but he plays it efficiently, Scott. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he falls off in one place. Him him, him, him versus the uh, left guard right here. Look at, look at the ball get off right here, Scott. Look at, look at the quickness off the line of scrimmage. Look at that pressure on seven like that. Just a tall, long dude. And I'm like, man, I don't even know where you would even – where you would even rank this guy versus the right tackle right here, Scott. I don't even know where you would even rank a guy like this. Working the hands, coming off the ball, patience off the rush, right? Yeah. Patience, boom, hands, hands up, right? Making sure, making sure, like, hey, you know, is this run, 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 pass rush mode? Go. You know what I'm saying? Hands up, hands up, trying to, trying to, trying to bat the ball down. I see a, I see a refined player. He's an older dude, so that's why you can. Um, you know, you can, you know, see the nuance in his game here. Take a look at him versus the left guard. You can see some of the nuance in his game here. And I'm just and I'm just like, man, where do you even play a guy like this? Getting kidding Shador ass up out of here. And I'm like, man, where do you even play a guy like this? Right. I think he's kind of too small to play three tech for real. Definitely. Um, but he is a big dude that can play in, but he's not bendy like an end. I wouldn't necessarily call him like a power rusher because he does have quickness. But he's even more quick in B gap. He he's a traditional left defensive. End. I mean, you're you're basically describing Demarcus Lawrence, pretty much. I mean, you wouldn't you pretty wouldn't much. you wouldn't say Demarcus has an amazing bend. And speaking Cowboys again, sure. uh, you wouldn't put him on the right side as much. You and you could slide him in that three tech on pass rush downs. Yeah. I, you know, I, I really feel like there there's there's going to be a, a handful of these left mm -hmm. defensive end type dudes that will be on Zimmer's radar uh, because. The law doesn't have a lot of years. Now, it all depends how long Zimmer is here, you know, but don't be shocked. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, Scott. You know what I'm saying? And think about, uh, think about Brandon Dorless. You know, like D law plays B gap on passing downs, right? Mm -hmm. Like they'll line him up first down <laughs> and just put him <laughs> in there and just let him wrestle with people. And, and he come out winning. They can get away I'm with like, that in college. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, I like the toughness from that. You know what I mean? I like the athleticism from that. I like the arm length. 
I, I disciplined player. I fan. I'm a fan, dog. And he's down here at 83. I like him better than some of these other players that they had in front of them. But I don't know. Maybe Vosh just got his own pick as whatever. Kalen King got to watch him. And we're you know we're in that got to watch him territory right now. But Jonah Ellis is a is a real quick pass before you move forward here. Shouts out to Two I for getting the Christian Mahogany uh, interview. Fantastic stuff, Two I. Shouts out to Christian Mahogany. I ain't watching yet, but uh, you know, if 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 Two I is taking time out to talk to him, then I need to yeah. I need to go and um go and you know get some eyes on Christian Mahogany from Boston College. Well, that's the problem. Boston College you got to sell your soul to get they film, but um but I find him. John Ellis at 86 uh, has probably the best first step in the draft, but he's a run around the circle guy. So y'all know I can't stand a run around the circle guy. Uh, Spencer Rattler at 88. Bullshit. He ain't better than Dwayne Carter. Dog. Come on, man. <laughs> Braden Fisk is a really is a really fine player. He had a pretty good senior bowl oh, game. Him, yeah. Sure. Um, great first step too. you know, it, it, he's 295. We'll see how that goes. But he tough, fun, though. tough dude, tough dude. Bunch of pale time, dude. Isaiah Adams, Trey Benson, Cedric Van Pran. Okay, we mentioned all these guys. Austin Man, Book. Real quick, the the running backs between about forty to to hundred is a lot of them. They all go Ooh, right there. Yeah, right there. That is your sweet spot for a running back there. Um, Jared Rice, son, uh, got drafted at ninety seven. That's cool, but he ain't better. Jeremiah Trotter at ninety nine. I've been seeing him falling down draft boards a little bit. It probably got something to do with his size and his athletic profile in general. He's more of a move forward linebacker. He probably don't give you a whole bunch of coverage and he things like that. He ain't got the quick hipness. He ain't got the quick hipness. <laughs> and Michael Pratt is the 100th player, which is some bullshit as well. They let my boy off, Scott. Scott, they let my boy off. Oh, 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 oh. oh, let me go ahead and just prep this film up, dog. Let me just get this shit ready for y'all, boys, man. Let me just, hey, man, but that's what it's all about, though. That's what this all about, though, man. We we gotta we gotta do our due diligence. We gotta provide context when we say these things, and we have to take our side loudly. So when the shit hits the fan, hey, Vosh took his side loudly here. You know what I'm saying? Let's pull up some goddamn uh, Dwayne Carter before we get up out of here, Scott. Let's pull, let's, pull up some, let's pull up some Dwayne Carter before we get up out of here, man. Let's enlighten him. I don't know, man, Scott, man. I just I don't know what be wrong with these characters, man. You know. And look, man, shout out to Dane Brugel, man. The best in the event. I don't know. Dwayne Carter's number 90, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to have to identify him for you. I'm At, at some point, he's going to get a cool little highlight package, but... Ah, man, let me just get this off my chest. I, I, I've been I've watched him as recent as like today. Uh, and mind y'all, y'all tap into my Patreon, patreon.com slash Vosh Lombardi. Uh, you know, all this film that I'm watching, Patreon probably seen it like a month ago. Not not um, Carter, because I'm, I'm so excited about him as a player. But we watch all the film early in my Patreon. So if y'all want to tap in and see some more film, go to patreon.com slash Vosh Lombardi. Appreciate y'all. Dwayne Carter for the duration of this uh of this film that we're about to do, chat. He's number 90. You can't miss him. He's either going to be in A gap, B gap, or he's going to be in C gap. He plays all the positions. He plays everywhere. He's a rundown guy and he's a pass rusher, right? Defensive tackle. So here we go. Uh, him versus number 71. The first thing you see is power in his hands, his striking ability, right? But unlike a lot of these characters, they have a good strike. Um, you know, we were we were talking about um our Clemson character earlier, uh, Ru Ray, you know what I'm saying? He's a guy that got powerful hands and he'll strike a character backwards, but he'll continue to run down the middle of that character. With nuance, with hand strikes, Scott, you can actually strike people in different directions, right? You can find, you know, there, there are certain landmarks you can, you can land your hands to make them move in different directions. We'll talk about it one day, you know, when we watch a film. So, we're not just striking just to stack and shed and read run game. We're striking to get 71 all the way out the way. 91, uh, uh, 90 versus 71. Boom. Get a good little strike. Get up field. And look, you tried to hold me, but Jordan Travis, just a gangster getting, getting rid of the football here. Hey man, you was almost dead as fried chicken here. Now this is a different type of strike, Scott. Now we're going to strike, but I'm being more patient. Remember that word we used earlier in control, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to 90 uh, versus 71, the right guard. I'm going to come off the line of scrimmage in control. I'm going to strike you, keep you in front of me, find the ball carrier, stack and shed you, find the ball carrier and, and I'm going to go and get you. This is why I think he'll be a pretty good, um, 
you know, odd front guy also, two gapper, uh, three, three, three front, three, four front, whatever you want to do with him. Uh, we got him right here versus the left guard lined up over number 70. Let's see what he does here. Why did I save this play? Once again, he's in control, Scott. He doesn't really go backwards a whole bunch. You may get him with some of these side blocks, like these down blocks where, you know, he maybe didn't see you, but you hit him in the rib or something. You know, he may go sideways then. But if if we're base blocking one-on-one, -on -one, you're not really going to get a lot of movement on him. Uh, control, once again, he's going to punch the hell out of 70. Boom, settle you down. Look at 70 go backwards, Scott. Look at, look at your left guard go backwards. Mm. Look at his head fly backwards bingo he's gonna look around find the ball carry he's gonna get in on the tackle um this is not a top 100 player i, I guess guy uh take a look at him versus the right guard here boom even more power in the hand strike jordan travis got to get rid of the ball quick bro he got to get rid of the ball quick um if you just watch the whole game florida state versus versus duke there was a lot of times to where you know we had a play but we just look at that control seat man scott come on dog talk to him what, what you see right here scott no, go ahead, go ahead. You you killing it. I, I just I just like players in our OC. So um Florida State is running outside zone. They're going to pitch to the outside here. If we take a look at number 90 versus 71, what I like here, Scott, 71 does a really good job of reaching and hooking. 71 is in good position right now. They're running to the outside. 71 wants his hips to the outside of, of, of 90. Dwayne Carter, Wheezy right here, right? But he's not just going to give up on the play because he has a great motor, but he's going to work himself back around number 70 so let's take a look 70 wins the exchange i'm going to win that leverage back and him winning that leverage back forces the running back back inside to more help so this is a play for this character to make or this character to make but he's going to get off 71 because he's always in control he sees what's going on scott hey get off of me he's going to get in on that play also he tripped him up with his foot but <laughs> he at least saw him to get rid of him. he did his job by forcing it back inside he was the fourth player so he did his job, Scott. He, uh, we have him versus a counter right here. So 75 is going to pull to the left. That's okay. That means 53 is going to block down on him. What does he have to do if somebody's down blocking on him? He has to cross his face to get to the other side. Why? Because if somebody's pulling in one direction, seven times out of 10, unless you're San Francisco, the ball is probably going that way. So they teach you when you're getting down blocked on to cross face, boom, get around. You go chase the damn quarterback, dog. It don't matter who has the football, right? If you just follow your technique, it'll find you in the right place. Somebody down blocking on you, go go the opposite direction. Go cross his face and go chase the quarterback down. Well, what other plays I got for y'all? No, go keep ahead. the end of that, though. Let's go back. We I mean, ain't doing talking about that. That's a high football IQ play at the end there. He could have kept chasing the quarterback, but he noticed he was about to dump that thing off from the running back, peeling, and he oh, makes a play. Man. I mean, that's... Yeah. I added this in the play for a reason. I just forgot because we on the fly right here. But to come off the quarterback, off find the, the receiver, and make a play on the receiver, heads up. He's always looking. He always – but it, it don't matter. He's not a top 100 player. With I wouldn't take him in the top three rounds. Um, Take a look at him lined up here versus the left tackle right now. Versatility. He's going to work in this gap exchange. You just see raw power right here, getting these guards about the paint, causing the pressure, uh, causing May to – um, you know, move around to the left and possibly making that throw a little earlier than he than he wanted to. So the fact that this play went, you know, turned into some little nonsense. That's that's pressure from the inside coming from uh Dwayne Carter here. What else we got? Dwayne Carter uh versus the center right here. Oh, yes, yeah, somebody died right here. Yeah, somebody died right. Here. It's all good. It's all good, man. Drake may better get rid of goddamn football. <laughs> Drake yo, better get rid of goddamn football. Hey, man, it's a lot of pressures right here, Scott. It's a lot of hurries. It's a lot of quarterback hits and almost plays. But, hey, this is what coaching is for. This is what refinement is for. He still has rough edges. But, Scott, look at what his rough edges look like. Man, you know I, what I'm, I'm saying? A fan. Look at look at look at look at what is what his rough edges look like. He's not just immediately spinning, right? He's working upfield to get 76 to get those hip turns, right? And you can see 76 work his hips to the outside. And as those hips work outside, then I'm gonna spin back inside and we're gonna cause another errant errant throw for um for um Drake May there. Let's see what else we got on this play. We got him versus Miami. Look, Sky, this this 2021 film, I'm such a fan of him. I started working backwards. Uh Dwayne Carter versus the left guard here. He's, he's, he's going to work up field, seize the pass in front of him, try to get the hands up to bat it down, but he's an effort player, Scott. He's going to get in, and he's going to cause that fumble, strip that ball out, and go block somebody, man. Go find some dude to do jazz off my damn off my damn fumble recoverer. Uh, I went back to when Sam Howe was damn playing North Carolina because I got so upset. Scott, when you, when you, when you 
when I'm normally watching a player and I'm putting together a highlight, you may see two teams, you may see three teams. When I love a player, I get six games in because I want to be right if I'm going to boldly back you up. I don't think this, you're wrong here with him. I don't think, I, you know, we can see. We can see, man. But a little bit of a gap exchange here. <laughs> Center couldn't even get hands on him at all. You see the power mixed in with the quickness here. Pass rush ability getting set. Look, any, anybody laying hands on Sam Howell like this, I'm with you, dog. <laughs> Put hands on this goofy ass like this. And we got one more uh, one more play here versus the left guard. Go ahead, Scott. Now, just what I love about what I'm seeing, because this is the, some of these plays are the first time I'm seeing this, and mm -hmm. I just love the transition after he used – look at – oh, my goodness. Scott, come on, it, <laughs> You, like you said, most players. Oh man, sure. this, I'm sorry. That play is just crazy. Let's just watch one more time. He's over the left guard, by the way. He's gonna work inside, and this is hand placement. Also, we always talk about hand placement, but people rarely explain what it means. If you're gonna shrug somebody like this, that right, his right hand is probably going for the armpit or the elbow, and you see, you probably can't see it, but if we had the other angle, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. That his right hand is right up under that armpit and he's going to dip and he's going to really get a good shrug in there. Let me go back. Pardon me. He's, 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 he's going to get that right hand in there and really shrug and use that momentum against the Michael Parsons does this all the time and really shrug the shit out the center. And after that, <laughs> go, go, Man, he, he go, he's a smooth out. character. I know it might not look it because he's powerful, but even his technique and his nuance in his hands, it's all, that's why I said that transition, it's all one movement and getting after the quarterback after that. The, how is he not in the top 100? I, well, he's not a top 100 player. Scott. Uh, Michael Pratt's better than him. Motherfucker like uh, Austin Booker uh, from, from, from Kansas is really tearing it up out here. And, uh, tight end, Cade Stover. It's much better. Much better than my guy. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, Spencer Rattler, you know, of course we're going to put him. And he's a three. I think three techs, that's, that's a bit valuable to me. Right? Three I mean, sure. They can rush the passer. So. Sure. Hey. Scott, man, I, I I saw I saw him, man. I'm just I'm just watching him, and I'm just blown away that he's not in consideration. I, you know, I always go back to my PFF grades just to see where he was pre snap. I mean pre pre snap where he was pre process or whatever. Um, Dwayne Carter, Dwayne Carter, Dwayne Carter. I know he ain't on the back page. He better not be on the back page. No, I can't even find. So he 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 on here somewhere. Okay, so cool, cool, cool. He's uh he's in the seventies. He's in the 70s pre pre draft process, and now he's not even on the top 100 board. Scott, I think guys are Dane Brugler in particular. Shout out to him. I think Dane Brugler's got this wrong in particular. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a campaign here. This is one of the guys where I like to go, you know like like Dewan Jones last year, right? I campaigned for Dewan Jones. I'm yeah. all on social media. You know we we got film going, we got live stream going, and all that. You're gonna see me campaign for Dwayne Carter a bunch. Chat when y'all watched the film when I just broke it down. Did y'all see a player that's not top 100? Did y'all see a player that you wouldn't take in the in the top three rounds, even if you don't think of him as a first round guy, because he may not be right. But if I can get him in the second or the third, guy, you shitting me? Yeah, you pets taking Spencer Rattler over a guy like that. Big boys aren't aren't supposed to be about value. So yeah, quarterback is more valuable than defensive tackle. But that player, Dwayne Carter, Wheezy, God did is better than Spencer Rattler. I don't give a damn what what position. Rattler plays. That's a that's a that's a top fifty Rattler dude. Ain't even not, he ain't even like that though. He's not. I don't care if he plays quarterback. He's not. He been playing for seven years, just like Bo Nix. <laughs> but he's not. Hey man, I'm gonna campaign for for um. Tune in Friday. Me and Brian Rodgers are gonna be talking about defensive tackles, and I'm going to I'm gonna get on my soapbox about some damn uh Dwayne Carter. But it, it is, is what man. Maybe it is. maybe maybe it'll make its rounds, and it might get. A milli views. Yeah. <laughs> hey Scott. What that was say, a good one. Hey Chuck. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> Scott, let me tell you something. That was a good one too. But that six foot, seven foot that you you just snuck in there, boy. You snuck it in there a little bit. You ain't no good. <laughs> you ain't shit. Appreciate you though. Um, let's get into supers, man. Supers. I appreciate y'all for being here, man. We uh we still got content that we're gonna drop uh throughout the week, whether we go live or not. I mean, we still could go live, you never know. But um be sure to tap in with us, all right? Here we go. Uh what's it, the 14th? Cool, cool, cool. Valentine's Day, man. Valentine's man, there we go. Supers. 
we them boys draw the five. It says reason why JJ, JJ McCarthy and Bo Nix are getting first round consideration. The 2025 class is horrible. So teams are going to get these guys early. Well, that's window dressing your board. That's overrating. And, and you know what? I hope you, I hope you get what you deserve. <laughs> you, you overlooking like you, you, you overrating a quarterback because next year class is trash. Just don't yes. get any quarterbacks from this, from this. That's record. how you get fired as a general manager. Get your ass up out of there. Appreciate you though, Weedon boys. Uh, Vicente Aguare dropped the deuce and says, what round pick kick returner? What round pick kick returner to kick Turpin off the team? Um, Turpin make $38, dog, and he ain't hurt. And he's one of your most, ex- you know, big Explosive play. Players, yeah. Explosive players. He, he, ain't got he a- had a very underrated offensive year this year. He had four touchdowns this season, and he just didn't get the ball thrown to him a bunch. But when he did, he mm-hmm. made some good things happen. So I'm. We were well, at least I was. I know it was some jokes, but I was advocating for him to get offensive snaps. The return shit, I really can care less because he don't be he don't be scoring touchdowns. <laughs> so yeah. use his ass on offense where he can score touchdowns. Uh, for some reason, I ain't been getting them Patreon notifications. Uh, that's why I'm confused. Hey, maybe got to go there and undo it and then redo it, possibly, or just look in your settings or something like that. But we've been in there. We have been in there. Patreon is definitely a vibe. Y'all have got to come through. And uh, night 405, drop five of the Super Chat says, blindside offensive tackle seem overrated now. The pass rush was just moved to the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying that for a while, man. You 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 got to have two good tackles. Mm-hmm. You got to have two good tackles. This ain't the old days where um, your left tackle is your – shit, your right side your blind side too. <laughs> Every side your blind side if Max Crosby or Khalil Mack over there or one of the Bosa kids over there. You know what I'm saying? So um, the game has evolved. You got to have a right tackle that can play now. You know what I'm saying? So that is what that is. Let me hit refresh and all right, we good. Is Marcus Harrison in the house? He probably is. If Mark is Marcus Harrison in the house, Bueller, most likely. Man, ready to go. It's like it's like he got, you know, he hears Marcus Harrison and his phone just. He has AI on his phone that's programming to hear our voice say Marcus Harrison, and when we say it, it clicks it. Marcus Harrison says. At the volume, that's me, Will Steele, and fucking Dwayne Carter today. At the volume, consistency is like the steady current that propels a ship forward, even when the winds of motivation may wane. So remember, show up, stay committed, and let consistency hmm, be your compass. Wait a minute. Come on, Scott. Cause, cause, yeah. Come on, man. We was Scott. having conversations about something like this. Man, Scott, we consist hold on, just let the beat draw. Look. Consistency is like the steady current that propels the ship forward, even when the winds of motivation may wane. So remember, stay committed and let consistency be your compass. It'll guide you. It again. It'll guide you, won't it? It'll guide you, won't Number it? Number one right there, Marcus Hardison. Hey, consistency is put your ass in the hey, look, if you <laughs> right. keep doing it, it'll eventually point your Bro, ass in the right who direction. We were just talking about before we came on here. Yeah. We got, the, we got the black belt. We consistent in, in, in this specific thing we was talking about. So it's like, mm. you know, That's crazy. Cold, it's crazy. That's cold. That's cold, Scott. That's cold. And you know, not getting complacent, and not just yeah. you know, hey, look, we good. They don't, I mean, they don't show up anyway. We nah. let's constantly, let's constantly get better. Let's fight this fight and shit. Let's, let's. Hey, yo, Marcus, that's 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 one, bro. This is for you. <laughs> Tell him we need to get a book, man. We need to get a book because I, I was saying this on my show, watch. It's gonna come in time. Well, you guys should hope so, but it's gonna come a point in time where. We elevate, we get to a point where we're in the studio and we may not be able to do the mm. live as much as we would like to. Yeah. But I still want to read these Marcus Hardison quotes. Let's get a book. Let's, Let's put them way. in there and read them. Marcus Hardison. Just put all jokes a- aside, there are some quality life quotes, man. Marcus, just just put a thousand of them in there. I'll I'll pay you money. <laughs> Marcus, I will pay you money to just have a direct line for it. And we'll just flip through the pages and we'll, we'll, we'll make it a thing. You're going to be part of this bit in a long time. Um, Fantastic quote, man. Fantastic quote. Uh, Marcus Harrison said that's one of his, like, like that's an original, original. Marcus Harrison quote right there. So, Hey man, shots out to you. Um, 
fun show. Appreciate y'all for being here. Um, I wanted to uh, include up. the phones a little bit, but you know, go ahead. Before you move forward, man, can we please, can we please get some fire, some flames, some water, some whatever in the chat? I don't think people understand what you're doing here, Vach, in regards to these these prospects and you grab the film. You br- this, this, this to me, if, if I'm a draft guy and I'm watching this, you're spoiling me. Mm. Like you're spoiling me. I, so this is, this is rarefied air in my opinion. And I just want to give you your flowers here publicly right here, right now. This is, this is some fantastic stuff, bro. I'm enjoying hey, this man. ride. I know hey. I'm just, I know I'm just a passenger in this situation, but I, I always openly admit to that. I follow the compass of the Vos Lombardi's, the Fusta King's appointment in the right direction, man. He ain't never steered me wrong. Hey man, that mean the world to me, man. That mean the world to me. Glad to hear from you. You know, we always on the on the same page with a lot of this stuff and consist. We we we. I like how we we could just publicly say that, man. I'm like, hey man, what's good the business, business, man? We, ain't nobody doing better than hey, who better than this motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, we 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 always on the same page with the work, man. Let's keep working because we don't we're not just hobbyists, man. Like mm-hmm. we we ain't we not out here with just smudgy cameras and bullshit microphones dog like we out here like we i want to i want my 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 kids to be straight you know what i'm saying i'm trying yeah. to get trying to I'm homeowner trying to get a boat you know what i'm saying i'm trying to I'm, i want this thing to turn into something and me and will still just been we we've been getting clues over the past couple of months that that's in motion mm-hmm. you never know who's watching you never know who's watching, you know. So you always have to evolve. You always have to put your best foot forward. You know, your 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 next employer can be watching you right now. Even if you are, if you work at a gas station and a millionaire come through there and get some gas and you bullshitting at the job, and they hiring for something, you know what I'm saying? Like they they see you, you know. But if you take your, I remember working at at Pizza Hut, and I remember I just was polite as shit. I was just I'm a polite guy in general, you know what I'm saying? But I was just polite to this dude and he owned some business that he was doing or whatever. But for, for, and he gave me his business card for whatever reason. I didn't follow up on it or whatever because the job would have been shitty. But he owned some shit and he was going to hire me just off of how polite I was to him. You never know who's watching. You never know what you know where your next opportunity is going to come from. So try your best to put your best foot forward into it. Um, and and kill that shit, man. Dare to dream. Be consistent, motherfucker. Let that let that compass be your guide, goddamn. Come on, Marcus Harris gave me one about compass. Come on, man. Come on. Let's walk outside and find right. north is that way. I know that because I'm country. Pull it but... out my pocket. <laughs> you know you what I'm saying? My, my, my shirt pocket, right? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Where I'm going. Um, but I love y'all to peace, though, man. Me and Will still could not do it if it were not for y'all. Um, you know, the volume is impressed with how we uh maintain, you know, live the uh, live retention and all that because y'all show up and y'all stay because y'all rock with it so we appreciate y'all sweaty cop um follow the volume on all his pages y'all know how i get down y'all know what to do vosh lombardi on everything patreon.com slash vosh lombardi that's where we watched um we watched uh dwayne carter and you know we watched most of his film there so y'all be sure to tap in there that's why i first discovered him when we was watching on on uh, patreon so tap into patreon.com slash vosh lombardi will skywalker steel uh pat no see walker tomorrow Yes, sir. Pat, Pat on tomorrow reacting to the Zimmer press conference. So should be a good one. It's going to be a goodie. A to Z Dallas on YouTube, 8.30 to 10.30. Y'all, y'all please check them out. 8.30 to 10.30 Central Time. Just because y'all because y'all all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Y'all all over the world watching us. And we, we thank for that also. Hey, man. Uh, if y'all came in late, rewind it. Uh, pull up the big board and in the comment section, if you're watching this back, let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think about Dwayne Carter. Let me know what y'all think about some of these other goofy ass players <laughs> that they got better than them. All right, y'all hold down with the dose of and peace, whiskey, man. Until next time, bye. Hey, nine times out of ten, make sure you do something nice for the lady. Hell uh, yeah, man, spend that bag, man. Yeah. In that bag, man. Don't let Forrest Whitaker sell the flowers, you know? You have to know good, you feel me? If you don't do something nice for Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs>